In a world where women were forbidden to study, she forced open the gates of knowledge. Where universities slammed their doors, she slipped through shadows and rewrote the rules. From secret candlelight lessons to the highest halls of European science, one woman defied tradition, tragedy, and time itself. She became the first woman professor of mathematics in modern Europe, and a mind that would not be silenced. Her name, Sofia Kovalevskaya, and this is her story. Sofia Vasilievna Kovalevskaya was born in Moscow in 1850. Her father, a strict military general, demanded obedience and discipline. Her mother, by contrast, loved literature and ideas, filling the house with books. From her first days, Sofia lived in a world of control and curiosity colliding. The family moved to their estate at Palabino, far from Moscow's bustle. Inside, Sofia's room was lined with old lecture notes pasted as wallpaper. She would stare at the mysterious symbols before she could even read. The walls themselves whispered the language of mathematics into her childhood. Sofia's uncle, a man with a passion for numbers, noticed her curiosity. He introduced her to mathematics, treating her questions with seriousness. For the first time, she felt that this world of symbols was open to her. A spark was lit that would never be put out. Sofia soon asked for more lessons, but her father refused. He insisted that mathematics was no subject for girls. The family expected her to learn sewing, music, and polite conversation. For Sofia, it felt like a door slammed shut before her very eyes. Refusing to give up, Sofia stole time to read by candlelight. She hid advanced books under her pillow, devouring every page. Her parents discovered her secret more than once and scolded her harshly. But her determination only grew stronger in the shadows of the night. Sofia's older sister, Anna, embraced revolutionary politics. Anna's friends spoke of freedom, reform, and breaking traditions. These bold ideas stirred Sofia's imagination as much as mathematics did. The sisters became partners in a quiet rebellion against the life expected of them. In 1868, Sofia saw only one path to freedom, a fictitious marriage. She and Vladimir Kovalevsky, a young intellectual, agreed to a marriage of convenience. This would allow her to leave Russia and study abroad. It was a daring gamble in a society that controlled women's futures. Soon after, Sofia left Russia behind. The ship carried her westward into the unknown world of European universities. She stood on the deck, staring at the horizon, full of hope and fear. The barriers of birth were breaking, and the struggle of her life was just beginning. In 1869, Sofia Kovalevskaya arrived in Heidelberg, eager and nervous. The streets bustled with students, mostly men, who stared at her with surprise. A young woman seeking mathematics here was almost unheard of. For Sofia, every glance felt like a question. Why are you here? The professors debated what to do with her request. Finally, they allowed her to attend classes, but only as an auditor. She could listen, but was not considered a real student. It was a seat at the edge of the room, a reminder she did not belong. But when problems were written on the board, Sofia's answers stunned the class. She solved equations faster and with more elegance than her peers. Soon, even the professors recognized her talent. Respect replaced laughter, though barriers still stood in her way. After Heidelberg, Sofia sought deeper training in Berlin, but Berlin's university flatly banned women from attending lectures. 
The rejection was final and cold, as if to erase her ambitions. Yet Sofia refused to let locked doors define her fate. One man saw her brilliance, the great mathematician Karl Weierstrass. Unable to admit her to class, he offered to teach her privately. Week after week, they worked in silence, exploring the hardest problems. In that hidden study, Sofia's mind soared higher than ever before. The work was demanding and lonely. She often studied until her eyes burned and her hand cramped from writing. Outside, the world carried on, unaware of her battles with symbols and proofs. Her persistence became her only companion in the silence. By 1874, Sofia had produced three extraordinary papers. They spanned differential equations, elliptic integrals, and the rings of Saturn. Each was so advanced that professors declared them equal to any man's. Her dissertation was unlike anything the university had seen before. The University of Göttingen awarded Sofia a doctorate in mathematics. She received it summa cum laude, the highest honor possible. At just 24 years old, she became the first woman in modern Europe to earn such a degree. Her victory was undeniable. A forbidden student had rewritten the rules. After her doctorate, Sofia returned to her homeland, hoping to teach. But Russian universities refused to consider a woman for a faculty role. Doors were closed in her face and letters went unanswered. Her brilliance meant nothing against the iron walls of tradition. With no post and little income, she lived in uncertainty. Her mathematical papers had no audience. Her career seemed stalled. At night, she wrote letters filled with loneliness and despair. Each passing year felt like the world had forgotten her. Then came Gösta Mittag Leffler, a young Swedish mathematician. He saw her genius and fought to bring her to Stockholm. His letters and lobbying gave her another chance at academia. For Sofia, this was a door creaking open at last. In 1883, she was appointed a private docent at Stockholm University. The following year, she was promoted to extraordinary professor. Though Sweden was far from home, it gave her what Russia would not. Her classroom filled with eager students, listening in awe. Sofia's name soon appeared on the editorial board of Acta Mathematica. She became the first woman to serve on a major mathematics journal. Her reviews and insights shaped the work of leading mathematicians. She was no longer just a participant. She was a gatekeeper of knowledge. In 1889, Stockholm named her a full professor of mathematics. This was the highest academic title, and no woman in modern Europe had achieved it before. It was history in the making, but her joy was tempered by solitude. Her personal life carried a shadow even as her career soared. Her husband, Vladimir Kovalevsky, died in 1883 under tragic circumstances. Left a widow, Sofia struggled as a single mother raising their daughter. She balanced grief, teaching, and endless work. Every achievement was marked with personal loss behind the curtain. In 1888, the French Academy awarded her the prestigious Bourdin Prize. Her work on the Kovalevskaya top solved a problem thought unsolvable. The prize money was doubled, a rare honor that confirmed her genius. At last, the world cheered the name of Sofia Kovalevskaya. Beyond mathematics, Sofia poured her heart into literature. She wrote memoirs like A Russian Childhood and co-wrote plays with her friend Anne Charlotte Edgren Leffler. Her pen revealed the struggles of women, the pain of loss, and the search for freedom. Her words let the world see not just the mathematician, but the woman behind the numbers. In her final years, Sofia grew close to Maxim Kovalevsky, a respected jurist and sociologist. Their friendship was filled with shared ideas, debates, and long conversations. He admired her brilliance and gave her emotional support in a life often filled with loneliness. For Sofia, it was a rare moment of warmth and connection. 
In 1891, influenza swept through Stockholm. Sofia fell ill and her condition quickly worsened. Pneumonia followed, and at just 41 years old, her life ended. A brilliant career, cut short in silence. Her funeral took place at Nora Begravningsplatsen in Stockholm. Friends, colleagues and students gathered to mourn. They honoured her not only as a mathematician but as a pioneer. The grave became a quiet place of pilgrimage. Decades later, astronomers honoured her in a place beyond Earth. A lunar crater was named Kovalevskaya. Her name now circled the skies, etched forever in celestial maps. From forbidden lecture halls to the moon itself, her story reached the stars. In America, schools began hosting Sonia Kovalevsky Days. These events encouraged young girls to explore mathematics. Her struggle became inspiration for thousands of students. The message was clear. The doors she once broke open would stay open. The Humboldt Foundation established the Sofia Kovalevskaya Award. It gave young researchers funding to build their own teams and ideas. Her name became a beacon for a new generation of thinkers. The award turned her legacy into living progress. Sofia Kovalevskaya began as a girl told she could never study mathematics. She became the first woman professor of mathematics in modern Europe. Her name shines in textbooks, on the moon, and in prizes worldwide. From forbidden student to immortal name, her light will never fade.